five brave amateur chefs ah. about to embark on the challenge of a lifetime. Simply gorgeous. They're taking over a top London restaurant. Jesus, this bloody hot. Serving up their own favourite recipes. Hot pan. To a room full of discerning diners. Bit burning in. <laughs> over five days, each rookie chef will tackle a different job. They'll cook four courses and escape the kitchen one evening to sparkle as maitre d. Every night, the highest scorer wins. And at the end of the week, one wannabe chef will be crowned king or queen of the kitchen, walking away with a thousand pounds in cash. Here's Johnny! Expect passion, pain, Ow. and some good old-fashioned panic. How the f*** can I reach that organisation for you, isn't it? This is Pressure Cooker. and the ends in sight for our overworked amateur chefs. It's the climax of a gruelling week and tonight one of them will be crowned king or queen of the pressure cooker kitchen. I might look a bit of a tart. After four nights of cooking, Johnny's currently in the lead with an overall average of 6.1 chefs out of 10. But Juliet and John are hot on his heels so it's all still to play for. Aromatherapist Juliet is hoping to snatch a victory by cooking her favourite dish of the week, the main course. Moroccan lamb with spiced couscous and a minty sour cream dip. First she makes her apricot glaze, then her couscous by adding red peppers, raisins, onion and mint. Finally she grills her lamb with the glaze and serves. Co-owner of the restaurant, Zach Jones, believes Juliet has got what it takes to win tonight. I know she's had some ups and downs in both the kitchen and the restaurant, um, but yeah, I think she is certainly is a close second, and uh, it all depends really on the last day. She could uh, fly ahead. Uh, anything could happen. I would love to, to, to win for my lamb dish tonight because I love this dish, but overall, whoever wins this competition has earned it. Currently in fourth place, Mum Sarah's Ud Cuisine dishes have missed the mark with the diners. Today's her last chance to impress, and she's going with... Crab and green mango salad with lime and chilli dressing. Bean sprouts, coconut, crab meat, fresh mint, watercress, lime juice and mango are all tossed together to make this salad. Dig. Tonight the scores will finally be revealed, but Zach doesn't think Sarah will be best pleased. Some of the scoring for Sarah I think may be a little unfair and, you know, I think she should have been a little bit higher up in the rank. Fingers crossed. You know, I've been so close. I don't mind, honestly, I don't mind at all. But it'd be quite nice to just... I don't know, really. Maybe it's better if I don't keep it pure, I don't win at all, ever. Careful what you wish for and be careful of your competitors. You know, the lamb looks really delicious, actually. That's probably my competition, the lamb and bloody Johnny. Fortunately, leader Johnny is banished from the kitchen tonight as maitre d. Zach's showing the supermarket food taster the ropes. You're a sociable guy, you, you, you know, you look the part, you look very smart tonight, which is good. Uh, all except for the socks, uh, uh, only one thing I would say, I mean... But these are my lucky socks, Zach. Well, in which case, <laughs> maybe they should have been underneath some black socks, but yeah, that's the only one thing I can say. But, uh, yeah, hopefully if they are lucky, it's going to bring the front of house some luck, which is good. So I, I do wish you the best of luck. The settings OK? You happy with that? They're eating the melon with the small knife and thing. Yep. We're going to take okay. those off, though, aren't we? Perfect. You take those off. Let's clear the tables. So if you take all the side plates off. Yes. We always got one joker in the pack. Third place John the cabbie is doing the starter tonight and he's hoping his final offering will be taken seriously. Melon and orange cocktail. Lovely jubbly. He I claims this dish is a favourite with young lovers. He first carves a melon, scoops out the centre, adds sherry, and ginger to orange segments and finally parma ham. The contents are put back in the basket for two people to share. John will need to carve at least 13 melons. So far he's done three in two hours. Make that two. 
cut it the wrong side. I think he'll, uh, he'll have to pull out all the stops tonight to get in front. And I'm not convinced that the dish he's going to do will be the right dish for him to do it. We're going back, it's retro, as, as Chef said. That's very retro. Might, might, might be having a comeback. I mean, they brought Vespers and Lambrettas back, haven't they? So maybe they bring melon balls and oranges back. With palm hand. There you go. Languishing in last place is interpreter Salma, but she's hoping to end on a high with her elaborate pudding. This is a Portuguese biscuit pudding. To make this traditional Portuguese pudding, Salma makes a rich instant coffee mix. Soaked in the mixture are digestive biscuits, which are then layered in a deep dish with crushed cookies. Walnuts, single cream and tinned custard. Finally, a further layer of extra thick tinned cream is added. Topped off with more walnuts, cookies and chocolate flake. Very Portuguese. Well, with the pudding you can't go wrong, yes? With all our ingredients coming either from tins or packets, head chef Andy is not impressed. It almost screams of laziness, to be honest with you. You've entered a competition to cook. She's not cooking. She's opening up processed packets that have already been bought, which you could buy from a store which any five, six-year-old child could make. Sarah goes to see what all the fuss is about. Yeah, yeah it's just like um, that chocolate biscuit thing, but not with, with a bit of chocolate. It's, no, it's coffee. The biscuits are duck in coffee. Do you just make yeah. instant coffee in the... Like an Italian or a Portuguese tiramisu. Wow. Looks absolutely foul. And the chef was going, he said, I'm really disgusted. Is that what he was saying, talking about her food? Oh, no. <laughs> Glad I'm not having to um, analyse that one upstairs. Anyway, that's for sure. So far this week, each maitre d' has concentrated their efforts on the dining room itself. But current leader Johnny thinks he can go one better. Because I've won the last two evenings, the kitchen will be making a concerted effort to win this evening. Uh, but obviously, um, I'm going to be putting 100% into what I'm doing. Johnny's an odd chap. Really is. I don't know if it's odd good or odd bad. Not enough people spend time having fun in their jobs. I'm a bit nervous, to tell the honest truth. Just a, a little bit worried as to how good he is. Be afraid, Zach. Be very afraid. In the kitchen, I've been very focused on the dish that I want to execute. Here, we've got a full house this evening. I'm going to have to be scanning like a giraffe on the Serengeti across the restaurant to ensure that all the diners are being taken care of. Johnny could certainly um, give the wrong uh, impression and, and almost freak people out. The kitchen seems to be a lot more relaxed tonight without Johnny in it. Um, Johnny's not running around, throwing pans around. It seems to be a lot more calm in there tonight. And I think everyone's enjoying themselves in the kitchen. Quite peaceful in here tonight. It's quiet without John, isn't it? So it's quiet without John. <laughs> he's so he's so chatty. It's so intense, his, his, isn't it? His, his voice, you know. But all good things must come to an end. Hi guys, how are you getting on? We were saying we miss you. It's quiet here, though. Hi. You look very calm and happy up there. Really? No, I'm honestly missing the kitchen. I really am. I want to be in here. Does so someone want to swap a black shirt for uh, the white? Come on. I'm Johnny, I'm the maitre d' for this evening. My name's Jonathan, I'm your maitre d' for this evening. I'd like to offer you a complimentary glass of champagne. On the final menu this week, we have John's honeydew melon and orange cocktail with parma ham. Sarah's fish dish of crab and green mango salad with lemon, chilli and pepper dressing. Juliet's main course, Moroccan lamb with spiced couscous and sour cream. And Salma's Portuguese layered biscuit pudding with mixed nuts and cream. We've been to Portugal and we know that they're quite famous for their pudding. But is it really made like this in Portugal? With the expectations of the final offerings running at an all-time high, co-owner of the restaurant Andy's going to have to take control. Right, how, many, um, how many of your boats have you got? Hello, hello, hello. How 16. many of these have you got? How many cuts? 18. 18. Okay, seven more. Move it. Come on, let's go, both of you now. Quick, 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 quick. We're up the wall. As it's the final night of service, nerves are running high. Johnny decides to try and break the ice. Yes, Johnny! <laughs> right, guys. Out the kitchen now, we're not ready, we don't need your <laughs> off. 
I don't eat sweets. If you two don't stop talking and start getting on with it, you're going to get no food out. I'm not the one who's going to get marked down, you two are. Right, right Chef. Early in the evening, a decision was made to remove all side plates from tables. This was to make room for John's large starter, so pairs of diners could eat straight from the melon baskets. Perfect. You take those off. Let's clear the tables. So if you take all the side plates off... Okay, we're up the wall. We've got to get this food out. Okay. But news of that earlier decision has just filtered down to head chef Andy, and it's about to cause a major problem. Uh, service! Restaurant manager, please! Service! Yes, Chef. John. A local service, you get your ass down here. You put the side plates back on the tables for the customers, okay? Right now. You've got to get them on before this food comes up. Got it? Yeah, Got just... it? Have you got it? Do you understand? Get the side plates back onto the table upstairs. Zach told us to take them off. I'm telling you to put them on now. Go! No problem, Chef. Well, every time I open the door, I get a. I'm not entirely sure why. Johnny's annoying me tonight. Um, he's pretentious, he's up himself, he's overconfident. I was following what you asked me to do. No, sorry, side plates are coming off because the side plates were too small for the table. I just want to come back down and have a word because Chef has really bawled at me down there. I'm taking the side plates off, he wants them back on. Okay, right, what you need to do, and, I, and I'm, I'm not washing my hands with this, just stay strong, get outside and just find out what it is and then come back. Chef, Zach is insistent that uh, they're not needed. Can you clarify exactly what okay, they are? I've told you, I've made it perfectly clear. Put the side plates on the table, then you can have the starters. No side plates, no starters. Got it? Yes. Go. I expected pressure and I expected uh, swear words, but not on a personal level. And one of the words that he used, I take very personally. I don't think it's, being a maitre d' should come down to personal insults. Coming up, Johnny's night goes from bad to worse. <laughs> Come on, I'll let you get on. It's not doing the role of a maitre d', doing the role of a waiter. And the pressure cooker winner is finally announced. And the winner?